notions come into being. Certain notions are repeatedly affirmed, either culturally or personally. And eventually we see through these notions, they dissolve. And we realize their notional nature. We realize the nature of our reality as consciousness. This is creation, existence and dissolution. This is the Hindu trinity. Though the infinite consciousness, this is just simply consciousness or Brahman, is indivisible, it experiences within itself the two states of bondage and liberation. Consciousness is simply consciousness, but it's radiant. And in that radiance, there is the, there's an apparent process, this apparent process of creation, existence and dissolution is going on. So this is bondage and liberation. Bondage is creation, existence, and dissolution is liberation. The dreamlike experience of diversity is known as bondage, and the sleep-like state is liberation. The sleep-like state is Turiya, and it's sleep-like because we're indifferent to the dream. The sleeper is always the sleeper, no matter what the dream is. It is the infinite consciousness alone which sees this is creation and this is dissolution. This is waking and this is dreaming. This is waking and this is dreaming. So creation is bondage and dissolution is liberation. And this is waking is the belief that this is real, this is creation, and this is dreaming, is when you realize that it's of the nature of a dream. So when you realize this is dreaming, this is liberation. If the infinite consciousness is compared to the homogeneous deep sleep state, that part of it which is comparable to dream is known as the mind. It is this mind that, as the jiva, sees itself as God, demon, etc. That etc. also includes human beings. And also liberates all beings from such diversity. So it's consciousness which eventually wakes up. It's consciousness which takes us into the dream and consciousness brings us out of the dream eventually. And we wake up to the realization of our true nature as consciousness. When this is realized, the homogeneity of dreamly sleep state is reached. That is considered liberation by those who aspire for liberation. And that's when you go beyond the process of consciousness. It's when you go beyond the radiance of consciousness and touch, this, touch the source of that radiance, the source which is non-different from the radiance. But we move from the process of consciousness to pure consciousness. The mind alone is all this, man, god, demon, trees and mountains, goblins, birds and worms. You can imagine the writer of this sitting at his desk, perhaps within the precincts of a temple, and this is what's in front of him. Men, there's the god in the temple, there's the demon at the door guarding the temple, trees, mountains, goblins, these inhabit the, the trees, the forests, birds and worms. So the whole of existence is laid out in front of the writer. The existence which includes the physical and the imaginary. It alone, that's the mind, becomes the infinite diversity that is seen here from Brahma the Creator to the pillar. And there's lots of pillars in Hindu temples. It is the mind that sees the space above. The mind is the dynamic and aggressive form of the infinite consciousness. It's aggressive in the sense that it clings to its notions. It hangs on to its notions. I have a previous video called The Voracity of Consciousness. Consciousness is voracious. 
it hangs on to things, it identifies things and imbues these things with reality and then builds up relationships with these things. This is the aggressive form of the infinite consciousness. Thus, when the notion of the universe arises in the infinite consciousness, we think that it is the mind that brought about all this. Well, do we? When the notion of the universe arises in the infinite consciousness, we think that it is the mind that brought about all this. There's lots of ways we can understand this, but let's just take this as exhorting us to understand that it is the mind that brought about all this. So thus, when the notion of the universe arises in infinite consciousness, understand that it is the mind that brought about all this. The mind alone is jiva. It is without beginning and without end. It is like space which seems to occupy pots and jars without being limited by them. So it's without beginning and without end. And our bodies, our lives, our minds are like pots of consciousness. The trouble is we identify with the pot, don't we? And we worry about the pot getting cracked, getting worn out and broken. But if we identify with what the pot contains, which is surely what's important, not the actual pot itself, then we can release all anxieties. It takes on and abandons bodies, but when it realises its own true nature, the deluded notion of physical embodiment ceases. So this is the true meaning of the videha mukta, disembodied liberation. It's not that you get liberated after you leave your body, it's when you give up the whole notion of embodiment, of body. This is the videha mukta.